I thank God for that, or I'd probably be in God knows where, in a gutter somewhere, railing a Coke off a hooker's ass. I don't know. But so thank you, Mom. You look like somebody that thank loves you, Coke. And I never in my life, never tried it. Big hair, don't care. Whoa, buddy, I'm just trying to build no old money. But they can never steal my heart or my soul from me. But you can stare. Lights, action. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Big Hair, Don't Care podcast. And Gil. We have a very special guest today. Comedian Rob, maybe. Yeah. Yes. So happy to have yes, you here, Rob. Thank you so much for being here. You I'm, don't have to have big hair to be here. I'm happy to be here, too, and uh, thank you for making me drinks. Um, oh, absolutely. Anytime. That's what I do. I am a bartender. I didn't realize <clears throat> I needed this much salt in my life, but <laughs> I took a drink off of it. was like, oh, all I want to do is eat the salt. Uh, are we doing the shots together, or am I doing it alone? Uh, you're doing it alone. Well, uh, Adam's got some over there. Oh, yeah. He'll definitely join you in clinky Did you already do the shot? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, he's way ahead of the game. Way ahead. But uh, yeah, cheers, cheers, cheers. (laughs) Mine's mango iced tea from Chili's. Okay, that was erotic. Okay, anyway. Well, so Rob, for people that don't know you that have tuned in, I want them to get a glimpse into what is you. Now, like I told everyone, you're a comedian. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Now... How long have you been doing comedy for? Ten years. May eighth, it'll be ten years. Ten years. That's I know. An awful I've long never time. committed to anything this long. Real. So, what makes you you love it that much that you're you're in this for the long haul? Like, yeah. is that your end goal? Is to be Netflix, be uh, your own tour? Yeah, I'm working on it. <clears throat> if people would follow me on things, I'm talking to you. Where's my camera? Please fucking follow me. What's wrong with you guys? But, Uh, Rob, in all fairness, you have to post shit on social media in order for people to follow you. No, I posted three things. That's uh, (laughs) Three things? Yeah. If I get more followers, I'll post more shit. Okay. Uh, You heard him, guys. You heard him. Make sure you follow him. Where can they find you? uh, Rob, everywhere's all fucked up. So, Twitter (laughs) is at maybe Rob, M-A-E-B-E, Rob. Instagram is at Rob dot maybe, M-A-E-B-E. And uh, TikTok is at Rob Maybe, and YouTube is at Rob Maybe. Uh, I fucked my Instagram up when I first started. I was just posting pictures of girls I was dating and food and dumb shit like that. So I deleted it all, and then I thought I could just use the same username, and Instagram was like, no, once it's gone, it's gone forever, So, which I think is a problem with Instagram. So now it has a period in it, and then... My Twitter got canceled for me saying things. <laughs> well, we're going to tag him in this, uh, you know, where, where this is all streaming. He'll, we'll have his name, and you'll be able to find him or come to my page, and you'll definitely be able to find him. Now, I'm curious, Rob, what's, like, the biggest crowd that you've ever performed in front of? 1,500 people at Tim's Toyota Center. That's a lot of fucking people. I know, and I thought I was God's gift to comedy. The set went great. And then the next night, I was like, oh, my career is about to blow the fuck up. And then two nights later, I was doing an open mic for four people at a bar, and two of them were talking to each other. (laughs) Okay. Well, yeah, so that's a little bit slapped back down to reality, I guess, huh? Yeah. And then that was nine years ago, and I haven't performed for a crowd like that before, or like since then. But- is that for the, lack of trying or? Yeah, no, it's for lack of being booked on things. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm marketable. I'm funny as shit. Yes, but yes, yes. I don't know. I'm bad at networking. I'm like, uh, I like to imagine that just arms are appearing right here, but I'm, <laughs> I'm bad at, I'm bad at networking. I'm bad at posting stuff on social media. Um, I'm perverted. I'm, yep. Yep. I say that's one of the things that really made me fall in love with you. Like the first time I saw you on stage, you have this this stage presence. This just I don't give a fuck. But yet you are so lovable, though. It's not like you're you're not mean and like rude. I guess I look, but you're not. You're just lovable. I don't even know how to explain it. I'm a scumbag sweetheart. Exactly. I, absolutely. I'm I'm garbage that is currently on fire, but I'm aware of it and I'm fine with it. But uh, I'm nice if I like you. Well, yeah, absolutely. You're a very big teddy bear sweetheart. I mean, I would hate to see you mad, but uh, you're definitely a sweet dude. That's for sure. We're like three minutes in, and I'm already getting fat jokes. All right, look. I oh know my I- God, no! We are Team Dad Bod here on the Big Hair Don't Care podcast. We love the bigger the belly, uh, the sweeter the pie. So we love all <laughs> the jiggle and all the meat in all the right places. So you eat those snacks, drink those drinks. The bigger the belly, the the juicier the bratwurst. Is that? Yes. Ooh, I love. Ooh, it makes me want a hot dog real. Bad. I want to wear a shirt that says that. Yes. We need to make sure to say that. 
Now, have you ever bombed? Yeah, everybody bombs. Yeah. I bombed uh, on Sunday, last Sunday. You did? Yeah, yeah doing a weed show. Don't do a weed show. Look. <laughs> I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna post a video of that because I got the whole set recorded. It was not good. It was 25 minutes of people not paying attention to me and not really paying attention to anything. I walked in. The room's fucking gray with smoke. Look, if you smoke weed, good for you. Don't make it your fucking personality, but good right. for you. Uh, I hate people that make it their where they're just like, dude, I fucking know everything about weed. I'm like, yeah. So does my dad, and he's like 90. <laughs> Like, weed was cool in the 70s. Now we just do it to think about how we don't love our kids. But, uh, yeah, this weed show. A whole bunch of people not paying attention. My buddy was filming me at the time. And at one point, I just looked at the camera and was like, these people are fucking morons. Why am I doing this? I still have 10 more minutes. What am I going to do? So I think I'm going to cut all of that into a video on why I'm never doing weed shows again. Like, I don't care how much money you offer me. I mean, I do. If it's if <laughs> yeah, yeah. if it's four digits, I'll do your dumb weed show. <laughs> but if you're doing a weed show, you probably can't pay me four digits for a weed show. But I, I just can't do it. Everybody's so stoned. I bombed so fucking hard. I literally thought maybe I should quit doing comedy, and then I realized, <laughs> no, I'm great. They the crowd fucking sucked. That's I just can't imagine you bombing because I've seen you at very many shows, and I just you're I make this face so a lot. Really. What do you want me to do now? Like, I told stories about smoking weed, which I thought they'd be into. I told stories about not smoking weed, which also I thought they'd be into. I started pointing. I asked an old dude. I go, you look like you have a lot of stories. And he goes, uh-huh. And then I go, do you want to tell any of them to me? And he goes, uh-huh. And I was just like, fuck, dude. I I, I hope he gets Parkinson's. <laughs> oh my! So what do you think it was then? That people were just too too high, way too stoned. Look, I I would tell a joke and then nobody would laugh, and then I would start talking to my camera guy about how nobody laughed, and then like two minutes later, people would laugh. And I asked a lady, I go, <laughs> why why are you laughing right now? And she goes, Oh, it was the thing you were talking about with your dad. And I was like, That was six minutes ago. Like, <laughs> I know it's fucking cliche to be like, Oh, it's gonna hit you in a minute, but literally, they were so look. I'm glad they they wanted me. Also, I was the only comedian performing. There was no warm up. It was just like, hey, here's Rob, and he's gonna talk to you about things. And then I had to do a raffle in the middle of it. They were so high when I announced it was the biggest raffle of the night. When I announced the winner, the crowd didn't even look at me. I had to be like, hey guys, things are going on over here. And they're like, oh okay. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine. Uh, it was fun. It humbles you. I was just gonna say it's probably very humbling. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Uh, by humbling, you mean I seriously considered shooting myself in the face. <laughs> but you didn't though, so you were humble. Not yet. You know, not like, oh god. Now that okay. we've been talking about oh it. Oh my god. Now that we mentioned it. <laughs> but no, I will not do your fucking weed show. If anybody is like, hey, Shit. can you, you do no, no. Say nope to dope. Pass on grass, kids. You heard. You heard it. I will do your Molly show. If anyone, oh my god, if anyone's oh, okay. doing a show on Molly or has Molly or knows a girl named Molly, I'm in. Is that that's ecstasy, right? No, it's uh, okay. Look, it's a little different. Like I don't, I don't. I'm yeah. ecstasy from like the '90s and early 2000s was was MDMA, which is what Molly is. Okay, mixed with either an upper like speed or a downer like heroin. I never did that because I was too worried about what it was mixed with. Mm -hmm. But pure MDMA is just it's all the good feeling stuff. Yeah, isn't that like people do it to like do sex and stuff? Yeah, I guess I've never done it to do sex. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's what I've heard. Look, kids on the street say it feels good. Mm -hmm. I've I've taken Molly and then tried to have sex but the moment i think about stuff like i was fucking one time i was on molly i was having a good time everything was going great and then i thought like man i've had hot pockets in a while and instantly my dick was soft <laughs> like what? the moment i think about anything else the dick goes away so now no. i take molly if i'm taking it with a girl i'm dating i'm just like look we're not having sex tonight just so you know i might go down on you for an hour and a half because like everything feels good mm -hmm. but my it's too much pressure to try to fuck on it i like to take molly and have a conversation with people oh okay like i should have took molly <laughs> before this podcast honestly well it sounds like you have i mean really we <laughs> i mean we should do a podcast called mdm yay like oh, we should my do, God. i would i would be a part of that podcast where you just do molly and then 45 minutes later you record it and you just talk because yeah. you have no ego you have mm -hmm. no no you, you're not worried about anything. There's no, what's that thing called where you're worried about what everybody else thinks about you? Uh, uh, fuck. Whatever um, it is. See, if I was on Molly, I wouldn't care that I can't think of the fucking yeah, right? word right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm totally worried about it. Oh, you're not, you're not self- Conscious. Yeah, thank you. There Boom. You We're a fucking team. team. So, <laughs> you're not self-conscious when you're on Molly. So, you can have these deep conversations about like really hurtful stuff 
or like really stuff that you wouldn't normally talk about mm -hmm. and you're just like oh is that how you feel that's cool i never thought about it like that you know that they yeah. made it for people originally they made it for couples that are going through couples counseling oh okay to like talk on oh. and to fuck on i assume wow but i would love to do your molly cast if if anyone out there has a Molly cast, I'll okay. fucking do it. You as heard it here, not, folks. As long as it's not in a weird like basement somewhere. <laughs> we're like, take Everybody's the Molly and then we'll send the Russian gentleman in. What if they're like, all naked and they have hot pockets? That's fine. See, then there you go. Dude, if I could eat a hot pocket while fucking and being on Molly, I'm pretty sure I would kill myself after that. Because like, what else are you gonna do? Like, you've yeah. you've reached the mountain. Yeah, that's it. that's it. Die happy. I don't even like hot pockets. I'm not fucking gaff again. <laughs> Now, what's the deal with, maybe you can educate me because, like, I'm a naive whatever. Um, what's Don't the say whole, that about yourself. Well, what's the whole fascination with the whole mushrooms epidemic, the whole shroom thing? Like, I hear this term, microdosing. I was always taught that taking mushrooms, you eat this poop-covered mushroom thing, and then it's like, ooh, trippy, like, whoa. But then these people are like, I'm microdosing, and, like, they're at work. How the fuck are you not seeing scary clowns and things moving? I don't understand it. First off, if you're eating it and it's poop-covered, you've skipped a step. <laughs> So oh, okay. normally, no, no, no. normally you clean it first. Uh, also, I like that you called it the mushroom epidemic. Like, uh, well, I don't know. I assume Fox News is like, tonight, make sure your kids don't go to school tomorrow. There's a mushroom epidemic. See, exactly. You know what's a mushroom? The Last of Us is a mushroom epidemic. <laughs> and I've never even seen that show or played the game. But I, pop culture is so intrusive that I know it's about mushrooms. Uh I microdosed before. Okay. I microdosed for two days straight one time. So uh, what does it mean? Wait, wait, backtrack real quick. What? I don't understand. How, so if so you, you want to see crazy things, no, you just a it, you just feel happy. So okay. if you if you if you wanna if you wanna have a tiny trip, you take like a gram and a half of mushrooms. If you wanna have a decent trip, you take two and a half grams. If you wanna t have a great trip, three and a half grams. Four grams is what I call well, not me, but the whole world calls it like a hero dose. Okay. Where you take enough that your ego's gonna die and you're gonna be a different person when you come out of it. You're gonna like yoga and you're gonna believe in astrology and all that shit. Uh, <laughs> but microdosing is like a quarter of a gram. So it's not even enough to really fuck you up. It just makes everything brighter and makes you go like Fuck yeah! Like, how is it different so than acid? Isn't it the same thing? Uh, so, my uh, mushrooms are from the earth. Acid is like man-made, and people are like, "Ooh, acid's dirty." Like, I'd rather take my. I love acid. Hmm. I would, I would, I would do acid a hundred times before. Well, I you do, do see visuals with acid, though, right? Yeah. So, weird story, and uh, it seems like it's just be, so I can name drop, but I promise you, I'm not name dropping. So, <laughs> I was. It was my birthday, and I was in Bisbee. I was at Doug Stanhope's house. There's the name drop. Let me oh, drop it real quick. He wasn't there, so. We know not that cool. Uh, the girl I was dating at the time, it was me, her, and another another comic, and uh, a friend of Stanhope's. We were all there, and we were taking. I was taking mushroom microdoses. A friend of mine gave me pills, so they're they're ground up mushrooms in like half gram pills, and I was taking one and then drinking and bullshitting at the fun house. And Doug has. I don't know now because his house burned down, but he had like trailers all over his backyard where comics could stay and friends could stay when they were in town. Mm -hmm. So I was staying in one of those trailers and I had been taking little microdose mushrooms and it got to a point where I was fucked up and drinking and not realizing I was fucked up. And the comic that was with us, uh, she's fantastic. I don't know if she wants me to say her name, so I'm not going to, but she kept going, Rob, take your medicine and handed me more microdose pills. Mm -hmm. And at one point me and the girl I was dating, I was like, we're gonna go to the we're gonna go to the thing and sleep. And she was like, "Okay, make sure to take these before bed." And it was like three microdose things, so I took them. We had lack lackadaisical sex, not on her part, on my part, because I was tripping pretty hard. And then I like to fall asleep with the TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And same, I was same. there's no cable in a in in a, a trailer, so I was like, "What is what what's in here that I can watch?" He had a DVD player, Tropic Thunder, or one of Stanhope's own specials. And I felt like <laughs> that was weird. I'm sure he didn't put it in there. I'm sure somebody else put it in there. But I was like, I'm not watching Stanhope special at Stanhope's house while I'm tripping on mushrooms on my like 36th to 37th birthday, whatever it was. I was like, I'll watch Tropic Thunder. So I fell asleep. Not realizing I had just taken about four grams of mushrooms before I fell asleep. I woke up in the middle of the night. I think the Tropic Thunder fucked with my dreams. I thought I was in Vietnam. I'm not old enough to ever be in Vietnam. No. I ran out, and the chick I was with was like, where are you going? I was like, I need to get out of here. They're fucking coming. I ran out into the middle of his backyard, completely naked, where everybody else was just like, there was like three people just like <laughs> hanging out drinking, and they were just like, Rob, your dick. And I was like, all right, time to go back to bed. 
I've never had that happen on acid, is what I'm saying. That sounds like a phenomenal time. I can't believe that I've never tried that. You should try acid. Wow. You should try acid mushrooms. I can't see, but here's the thing. Okay, so here you're gonna get to little know a little bit about me right now. I'm all ears. Terrified of dying. Yeah, so am I. Terrified of dying. And my mom, when she sat me down at a very young age and gave me the drug talk, all I remember her saying was, Angela, all it takes is one bad batch of shit and you're dead. Well, goddamn it, that didn't scare. I mean, I've had coke laid out in front of me. I've had every drug in my hand around me. And I, I mean, curious, but I could never do it because I'm terrified to die. I, and so I thank God for that, or I'd probably be in God knows where, in a gutter somewhere, railing a coke off a hooker's ass. I don't know. But so thank you, mom. You look like somebody that you, loves mom. Coke. And I never in my life, never tried it. I know. Okay. So I've done Coke three times. I hate it. I would never do it again. But I tried it three times to make sure I hated it, which is not <laughs> a good, it's not a good policy for life. <laughs> I was going to say, you know. Because if I loved it, I would just become a Coke addict. You know? Well, yeah, yeah. True. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'll tell you this. You can't, you can't get a bad batch of mushrooms from the ground. It's food poisoning, basically. The worst that's going to happen is you're going to throw them up. But what if I go like crazy? What if I see like crazy things and I jump in front of like a bus or something? Like, I don't know. Don't do mushrooms around a bus. Well, like, I mean, well, but see, yeah, that's just too much work. I No, I would so, just rather not. One of my favorite comedians in Arizona is this guy named David Case. Mm-hmm. I love him to death. Uh, he, uh, he doesn't do as many spots as he should, but he's one of the funniest people that I know. When he's on, nobody can top him. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was going through my divorce, I had spent the whole day drinking with Eric Subcheck. You know him; he's a great mm-hmm. comic. Yep. I had spent literally the whole day drinking. I was crashing at Subcheck's house, and I text Dave and I said, "Hey, I'm getting divorced." And he texts me back and he goes, "I haven't ate the mushrooms. Do you want it? Maybe it'll help you." And I was hammered drunk. Don't don't take mushrooms if you've been drinking. Mushrooms okay. give you like slightly an upset stomach. Oh, okay. So, okay. It's probably the feces on it, I would imagine. No, it's because it's poison. That's why you trip. Oh, that sounds lovely. So, so lovely but you won't time. die. Oh, so, okay. So I go, yes, I would love that. And he picks me up because I'm too drunk to go anywhere on my own. And he takes me to his house. And he, I eat all the mushrooms. And then we go for a walk. And at one point, I've never thrown up on mushrooms. It's a common occurrence. People throw up on mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Never did it. Until mixed with the booze and the sadness, I'm pretty sure. I'm walking with him and I'm talking and I'm crying and I'm like telling him about everything. I take mushrooms when I want to figure shit out in my life. Oh, that's such a hippie thing to say. I've heard a lot of comedians say that and just general people. And a lot of white dudes with dreadlocks. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm I'm never going to be that fucking guy, but I do. Sometimes when I'm like, I can't figure my life out, I'll take mushrooms because it takes you out of your ego. So it's like, you know how you can give me great advice, but you won't take that same as Correct, yes, yep. On mushrooms, you will. Oh, okay. On okay. mushrooms, when you give yourself advice, it's like two people talking. Oh, so, interesting. Okay. I'm talking to Dave. I'm crying. I drank a lot. And then I just puked all over his legs and shoes. Oh, okay. And then we <laughs> saw a balloon floating through the sky. It was black with a string on it. And he didn't take any mushrooms. And I was like, Dave, I'm tripping hard. And he goes, nope, I see it too. And I was like, well, that's a bad omen. <laughs> yeah, I uh, say. My other story. I don't know. Go on. Continue. Sorry. <laughs> I lost it. I had it. I lost it. Aww. It happens. Um. Okay. So you so. would never. You would never take acid. Mm-mm. Mushrooms. No. You wouldn't take mushrooms, even though they're from the ground. No. It like it's. I'm telling you, any kind of like drugs scare me. Um. I've Don't tra- say drugs so negatively. Like okay. That. Like I would never do heroin, I mean, meth, any of that. Oh, okay. But I will take a bunch of acid. And hang out with my See, friends. And I don't I don't judge for though whoever wants to do whatever you do. God bless. I am not uh, one of those where I, can, oh, he's a cokehead or he's a whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, do what you do. I, I'm going to love you as long as you don't, you know, uh, steal from me, lie to me, beat me or nothing. I don't care what you do. Go live your life. Have fun. I just, I'll pray for you that, you know, nothing bad happens. You know what's weird? The I will love you if you don't steal from me, lie for me, beat me or nothing was actually my wedding vows. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm divorced. So. Oh, oh yeah, cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> but look, you have to try. Look, in a in a in a controlled environment where there's no buses, because <laughs> I, I I know mm-hmm. buses are your one fear. Yeah. Uh, 
you take mushrooms, go up to a cabin, like rent a cabin and the and like Flagstaff somewhere around there. First and, of all, have you ever seen that fucking horror movie, The Fucking Cabin in the Woods? Get the yeah. fuck out of here, Rob. Okay, it's I'm not one of my favorite horror in a movies. Cabin. I'm already scared of, you know, fucking murderers and shit. Yeah, okay, so if you happen to pick the cabin that has all the shit and that's a problem, but don't go into the basement of any cabin you're ever in. First <laughs> okay, off, okay, well. Look, find a place that's that's secured. Go to Jump Jump Street. Is that the place where it's like trampolines everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> Take a bunch of acid and then <clears throat> interact with the children. Oh, uh, that sounds safe. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying if you've never done hallucinogens, it will fucking change you. Oh, my and gosh. And that's saying it as a dude that is a cynic as a motherfucker. Okay. Acid will change you, and Molly will make you realize why you still love life. Hmm. God, I sound like such a drug addict. No. <laughs> no, I thank you for being so... Open and honest, I mean, because it's, I don't know, it's real deal. It's real life. People do these things. And like I said, no judgment. I find it fascinating um, listening to people that uh, do it all the time or have tried it or whatever, you know. I had a friend that refused to take Molly. He's uh, So, a little background on me. Uh, I grew up with with D&D nerds later in my life. D&D, Rob? Yeah, no, not me. I didn't oh, play, okay. but so one of my one of my closest oldest friends loves D and D. I I didn't play, but we were friends. Besides that, so those are, he actually saved me. So besides that, I grew up with a bunch of cholos and gangsters. So it was either hang out with them all the time and get into some shit, or hang out with my buddy Matt every once in a while and not get into as bad shit. Like we got into like fights and shit like that. But so those are the two people I hung out with. On the cholo gangster side, I have a buddy that was like, I would never do Molly. And I was like, why? He's like, because then what if I accidentally suck a dick? And I was like, yo, if you're thinking about you might accidentally (laughs) suck a dick, you want to suck a dick, not (laughs) on Molly. For real. Like, nobody's ever like, ah, I took some Molly and then I blew three senators. Like, I didn't mean to. (laughs) It just kind of fucking happened. No, you had been thinking about that for months. Yeah, that, yeah, I'd agree with that. Same thing. You're not accidentally going to walk in front of a bus, (laughs) take Molly after midnight. Valley Metro doesn't run then. (laughs) Look at Rob. All right. Okay. Well, act like I don't have the bus schedule tattooed on me somewhere. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent bus person. Just so you guys no, know. No, we never would have guessed. I, I haven't had a car in a few weeks, <laughs> but before that, I you I relate to bus people. Like I fucking I love a person on a bus. Oh, it's so scary. I won't they, get on one. They've been saying Hell I'm no. getting my life together for the last thirty years. Like, all right, are you? Are, you're about to retire. You're almost retirement age. When are you getting your life mm-hmm. together? Yeah. Now, do you agree that um, I kind of always wanted to ask this to a comedian? I well, always hey. hear that a good that a good comedian. The reason why you're a comedian is because you've had um, past trauma, a lot of trauma in your life. That you have to have trauma to be a good comedian. Look, I can't look. It's a chicken and the egg situation. I so he he doesn't do it anymore because he's currently writing on the TV show Dave. But my boy Kevin Elliott, one of the funniest fucking comedians I know, and he lived a nice life. So I want to say no, but my dad beat the fuck out of me. We were homeless. Like, I think I'm good because of that. But at the same time, it's a hindrance. Yeah, I can't stop writing about my childhood and my dad, and I want to. But I'm like, oh, this is captivating, and this is blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Kevin's writing about his kid. You know, yeah. So, you, I, I have so many friends like my friend Matt, the guy I was talking about, the D and D guy. Yeah. He was like, I could be a comic, but my childhood was too good. My dad loved me. And first off, I'm like, I'm offended. Second, <laughs> like, I think you can do that. You can have a good childhood and still be a good comedian. Yeah. It's just way harder. Yeah, definitely. Uh, can you yeah. compete in the Olympics if you have one arm? Yeah, but it's the Special Olympics. Like, it's not the same. Yeah, very true. Very- <laughs> True. Touche to that. Shout out to John Higby. Yeah. I don't, who, who's that? Uh, a one-armed he's a comic guy? that has no, no. He has oh. no arms. But oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I love him. He oh, just yeah. did, he just did the show that the monthly show I run. Little clampers. He's he's the funniest motherfucker. Aww. Don't get weird. So I'm not. You did. You made it weird. No, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't have to be weird. Okay, we've all wondered what happened to his arms, and he's never told a straight story on it. Uh-huh. One day we're hanging out, and he goes, "Rob." We're at his house. I'm picking him up so we can go do a show out of town. And uh, he's like, you want to see a picture of me with arms? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yes. Yes, I fucking do. Every comedian in Arizona has wanted to see a picture Aww. of him with arms. So he looks through a folder. Well, I use too many fingers. He doesn't. Oh, my God. He uses his clampers, <laughs> and he looks through, through a folder. 
and he finds a picture and he pulls it up <laughs> and it's him standing there like this. The picture cuts off right here. He's like, oh. I had arms when they took this picture. You can't see his <laughs> arms at all. It's fucking shoulders up. That's it. <laughs> That's the funniest fucking shit. Oh my! I feel God. like if you've had a shit hand in life or shit too, <laughs> 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 I'm so good. Yes, but you are. Yes, you are. If you've had a shit hand and you can make fun of it, you're you're better than oh, most people. Absolutely, I agree a million percent. Now, if you had to lose both legs or both arms, which one would you do? Uh, both legs. Yeah. yeah. Why? titties ah oh, okay all right good man good we're being man. honest i've been drinking tequila look if i had no legs i could still fucking what's that dude's name that shot his wife through the fucking the bathroom usain bolt no oscar pastorius mm. good for you i could still get those little fucking legs the the ones that look like folded frisbees yes yes and fucking run super yeah. fast if i had no hands yeah that's true I feel bad because you asked that question, and I was like, if I had no hands, I'd fucking kill myself. And then we had just talked about Higby with no hands. <laughs> Higby, please don't kill yourself. No. Also, no. he can't shoot himself. We love you. Like that's no. impossible. That like it's not happening. Oh my God. I love you, John. You know that. We love you. You know Sorry. that. All right. I, I love John because whenever I see him, I <laughs> I just think I just, I just think of I just think of Futurama. Have you ever seen that yes, show? Yes. Yes. The robots, when they're like, get him with the clamps. Like, <laughs> all he's got is clamps. Okay, side note, because I feel like I've been shitting on him and he's not here to defend himself. I will tell you the best fucking story of my life. So we did a show in Bisbee, Arizona. And it was before they had a comedy club. So we're doing, like, the shitty bar. The stage was 10 feet high. We all bombed. Fucking, look, I've been drinking. I'll admit it. I'm a killer sometimes. Yep, he is. Sometimes I'm off. Sometimes I'm horrible. Most of the time, fucking fantastic. Me... Pauly Casillas, who is a murderer for real, and two other comics that were great, but I can't remember their names now, and then Higby. We all bombed, except for Higby. And me and a few comics decided to take mushrooms. We go to the bar next door. We sing karaoke. Pauly Casillas sings the most beautiful R&B song I've ever heard. Like, I teared up. Might have been the mushrooms. Mm -hmm, and probably. <laughs> I fucking tear up. And I'm so happy when he stops singing, the whole crowd claps. As he's walking off stage, Higby stops him with the clamp. Hits him with the <laughs> clamp. And he goes, hey, man, nice song. And he goes, thanks. And he goes, it's about time you satisfied an audience tonight. <laughs> That's who Higby is. Higby had a girl. He has no arms. He had a girl holding on to the fucking clamp, talking to him. And her boyfriend was like, come on, Stacy, we have to go. And she was like, give me a second. <laughs> She was going to fuck Higby with no arms. That's fucking and awesome. And she was going to cuckold her boyfriend. Yeah, hey, just because he ain't got no arms, why not? Yeah. Probably, he could probably do some really cool things with those. Higby's a murderer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he sounds like it. And sure. can't get through metal detectors. It's the best of both worlds. Oh so anyways, <laughs> let's talk more. See, I like this show because you get drunk and then you let your true shit out. And tomorrow yeah. I'm going to be like, hey, if you could cut all that Higby yeah. stuff. And you're going to be like, sure that's a seven-minute yeah. episode. Yeah, right? That was 35 minutes of the episode, Rob. No, the you ran it about John for <laughs> fucking ever. Let's do a Joe Rogan shit and do three hours. Let's yeah. do three hours. Right, right, yeah, Nobody's yeah. got shit to do. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> now, everyone always tells me, because uh, I'm a bartender, okay? So I've been doing that for like 17 years now. I'm an old I'm bird. very familiar with bartenders. Yes, yeah, I bet. All I do is date them. Yeah, I know. I know you're a serial uh, bartender dater. That's why I remember you saying that. I feel like we can short that uh, bartender fucker. No, <laughs> bartender fucker. No. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Um, Continue. You're a bartender. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I have always thought of the bar when I'm behind the bar. It's like it's my stage. Yeah. Like I can sling shit with the best of them to the best of them. Um, I've made many a grown men uh, cry and blush, and you know they're all still getting to know me out here in uh, you know big hair don't care podcast land. Dude, being a bartender is fantastic because if you can make a guy cry, oh. he's gonna drink more. To forget oh, that. Oh, absolutely, yes. And it's a win-win situation. Yep, and he's gonna tip you real big to keep your mouth shut so you don't uh -huh. tell his friends that you made him cry. Yeah. So that I've won that many a times. You're you're getting ransom tips. Yeah. Exactly, yep, which I love those. So people have always told me that, um, oh, my God, Angela, you're so funny. You need to be on stage. Oh, my God, you know, whatnot. What's well, stopping you? I guess I haven't found my balls yet. I'm terrified, terrified. Well, it's 2023. You can have balls if you want that to. That is true, yes. Uh, yes, that is very true. Why are you terrified? Uh, the How whole many people have been at your bar at one time? 
that you've talked to everybody where you're not talking to a specific person. You're kind of putting a show on for everybody. Oh, yeah. All, all the time. All yeah, the yeah. Time. How many? Uh, what would you say in front of you at one time? Uh, I would say, we'll say 35 at one time. Okay. So times that, times 10, mm-hmm. and then fucking do it. Yeah. You I'm, got this. I'm just terrified of getting up there and seeing all these little eyeballs looking back at me and nobody's laughing. Like, mm. I, I don't even know. Yeah, that I, sucks. I know. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck. I don't know how you guys fucking do it. I don't even know. We hate ourselves. Exactly. So I when mean, the set goes well, we go like, oh, maybe we shouldn't hate ourselves so much. And if it goes bad, we go, yeah, we were right to hate ourselves. Yeah, see, I don't know how you, I mean, you guys, uh, I don't know if it's because you're dudes or, I, I mean, and I'm sure the ladies. No, no, there's female comics. Yeah, I them. love four of them in in Arizona. Who are they? Uh, I will tell you, there's one, Dana Wilson. Yes, so queen, good. she's here today, love her. I wouldn't have said it if she was here, if they know she's here. Now I have to take it back. Dana sucks. Okay. No. <laughs> no, Dana's great. I said four, I think there might be less. It's okay, just name them. Oh, this is how I get canceled. That's okay. Well, we're in it together. Okay, Alice Foppy, when she's on, her fucking, she gets into it. Great. Oh, her roasts are fucking phenomenal. Thank you, Adam, off screen. I don't think I've seen her. Have I? Fucking AV? Oh, okay. I just need to see a picture. I'm just not. Okay. I think Jennifer Grawlow writes incredibly funny Mm -hmm. bits. And then, of course, the the queen, Celia. I knew you. Yeah, Celia. Uh, I love Celia to death. I know. She's so, Okay. If I can tell you one story. <laughs> okay. We almost pulled the whole set I know. I almost around. pulled it all almost down. I saw whole, him pointing at it. <laughs> Don't stop recording. Let's just keep it going. Yeah, we, fuck uh, it. Yep. <laughs> boy, you're going to have to edit Curtis a little bit, but it's head. fine. Yep. Oh, if it fell down on my I'll face. Fucking die. Okay. So I'll look. Pee. So Celia. Mm-hmm. Skank fest. Yes. She did the naked roast, right? Yeah. Like you're flat, like completely fucking naked. Yeah. Labia out. Doesn't give out. You know what's out. fucked up? I was going to do it. So the person that was roasting before her, his partner didn't show up. Mm, okay. So they, Sally comes over to me. I'm, I'm a little fucked up. I'm hanging out with Luis Alvarez. If you haven't seen Luis Alvarez, he's, he's the, he's the A1 from day one. Yeah. I fucking love that dude. I thought he was a rapper when I first met him. <laughs> Turned out comedian. Very fucking funny. Yes. So me and Luis are hanging out. I'm already fucked up because I wasn't performing. I'm just watching it. Sally comes over and goes, Rob, I need you. We go over to the side. They go, hey, the opponent for the guy before me didn't show up. Do you want to do it? I was like, how much time do I have? Mm-hmm. They said, you have one minute. Oh, Jesus. I didn't want to write four roast jokes in one minute. Yeah. I didn't want to bomb in front of that many. There was like 900 people there. And naked. Yeah. Well, on stage naked, I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be thought of as a bad comedian. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, look, I'm not bragging. I got an all right piece. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm chubby. I got an all right piece. I don't care about that. Yeah. I care about doing a joke that doesn't yeah, land in front land, of yeah. 900 people. Right. So I tell them no. And then as I walk off, I write four jokes about this motherfucker. Like literally walking back to my beer, yep. I turn around, I ran back, I go, I want to do it. And they were like, yeah, you can't. Uh, they go, he doesn't want to battle you. Apparently Hector told him I was good at battling mm-hmm. and he decided against it. Oh. So Celia goes up, mm-hmm. fucking murders. Nice. She goes against Evan fucking, what's his name? Evan Stone. Look, Evan Stone, great name. He's an ex-porn star. It should have mm-hmm. been Evan Long. He had a <laughs> massive penis. Oh, damn. Like, he thought, like, I feel like super hot girls think they can get away with murder because they're super hot. That's how he felt being naked. <laughs> he was like, I don't have to be funny. My yeah, dick's right. long. Yeah. Turns out, you got to be funny. Yeah. Celia fucking murdered nice. him. Nice. So, she said she had no problem doing it, but at one point, she looked back in the crowd. Me and Luis were standing on top of the bar and she goes once i saw you guys i got nervous oh look celia is a beast she's mm-hmm. funny as yes. fuck back to circling back it's a callback it's fine love it she does mushrooms yep she took so many mushrooms the last night of skank fest she looked at me and she was rob i gotta get i gotta get out of here i gotta go back to the hotel room and i go okay she walked backwards to the elevator and i go celia turn around it's easier that way <laughs> she goes i don't like the wall the way the wall's looking at me <laughs> She's such a fucking G Yeah. that yeah. when we got to the hotel room, we brought 10 people with us. We were all doing DMT. Have you ever thought about doing DMT? I don't even know what it is. DMT is mushrooms times 20. Oh, get real. You see God. People do it. If you do it right, you come back and you go, I'm not afraid of death But anymore. if you do it wrong, what the fuck do you see? You no, they. No, no. You just don't hit where you need to hit. Uh-huh. If you do it right, though, you touch another dimension and you come back and you go... I'm good on life. Like, if I die, I'm fine. I know there's another existence. So we all go back to the hotel room. Sally is passed out. 
we we're doing DMT. We're yelling. We're throwing <laughs> shit at each other. There's ten people in the hotel room. She sleeps through the whole thing. I love Celia like a motherfucker. Yeah. Dana Wilson, Celia, Jennifer Garallo. Mm-hmm. Oh, and fucking yeah, Alice. Alice. Thank you. Oh, yeah, dude. Mary's oh, a beast. Mary's that dry yes. bar comedy beast. Fuck yeah. Where I'm like, bitch. Love her. <laughs> yep. Hell yeah. Yo, I could call all of them beast. Because I mean beast as in comedy. <laughs> Mary Upchurch. Fucking killer. She's a killer. And like, I'm going to do clean comedy. I'm going to be on a cruise some point murdering it. I'm going to get a special. I'm going to be on Lifetime. I'm going to be the first female comic on Lifetime. Good for you. I fucking love you. A lot of people make jokes during that roast about how you network, but good for you. I wish I could fucking network. Uh, <laughs> Alice Valpy, she's a stone cold killer. When she's on, she's fucking on. Uh, on God. That's a that's an Alice thing. <laughs> she, I fucking, I love her to death. Dana Wisson, come on now. How can you not love her? Yo, there was a, okay, look. Quick, quick story. We were doing a show called The Lounge. Mm-hmm. Normally, very good show. Mm-hmm. Good crowd. Helped that my girlfriend at the time was bartending. Of course. Uh, of because course. I would go not even on the show just to hang out with her. Of course. And then eventually get like a five-minute, ten-minute spot. Mm-hmm. This, this night, I was on the show. All the killers in town were on the show. Mm-hmm. Fucking Jimmy Wisman was on it. That dude has yeah. a super popular podcast. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really do sets outside of comedy clubs anymore. He was there. I was there. Fucking, there was other people that were also there. And <laughs> I've been drinking. <laughs> Fuck you. I love it. Love we it. all bombed. Mm-hmm. And next door to it, they give you pizza as part of the payment. Okay. We're all there eating pizza, talking about how shitty the crowd was. And I went into the room to get another beer, talk to my girlfriend, tell her I love her. I do. Shout oh. out. What's up? Mm-hmm. And Dana's murdering. Mm. I had to go back into that room and be like, no, no, the crowd doesn't suck. We suck tonight. Mm-hmm. You know you know how humbling it is when every comic is like, yeah, fuck this crowd. And then you walk in yeah. and they're uh. they're doing applause breaks. And <laughs> yeah, shit, fuck and like, yeah. All right. Fucking Dana, yes. Hell yeah. I fucking love her. Not just because she's in the room. Right. I'm a champion <laughs> when she's not in the room. Mm-hmm. I like earlier you said she had her shirt off and Josh had a nine-year-old face. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Dana has her shirt on. Josh has a 10-year-old face. <laughs> well, you gotta fucking bust my jokes out, fucking Rob. Nobody I, knew at home. I wanna Yeah, I know, but that's a problem. Mm. Like you're not a, you're not selling coke. You're not cutting coke. You don't need <laughs> to have the staff wear not shirts on stage because they're afraid you're gonna she's gonna sneak out with a little bit of the podcast tucked into her bra. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, oh. What do you say we get into some fucking TikToks, huh? You want to get talked? What the talk? Let's what watch some talk? funny fucking TikToks. What the talk? Yes. Are we doing wigs? Yeah, we are after okay. this TikTok. You got, yep. Did you bring the red, red one? Oh, yes. Your Fuck fave, yeah. your girl. Dana, I look so good in this red wig. <laughs> Wait till I, I, I saw a picture. Okay, so I picked uh, some funny TikToks. I love when people fall. I fucking love it. Me too. I should have fucking went with that. I went emotional. Oh, you did? Oh, see, and I was going to do that, but I was so like, I Rob will think I'm sappy. Funny, funny, emotional. Oh, There's see, I, sh- I knew I should have did she's, it. She's an autistic girl doing a Childish Gambino song and doing it with no emotion whatsoever, but for some reason it makes me so happy. Aww. Okay, well, this is Dana, one of my... don't judge me. This is, this is one of my top picks um, uh, of a uh, funny, Ooh, salty. funny fall. Ready? Ready. <laughs> okay, this might be insensitive, but is that a girl? No, it's a drag. It's a drag queen. That's a drag queen. Okay, hold Watch. on, hold on, hold Watch. on. Listen to, listen to the. Yep. Right here. <laughs> is that the person filming? <laughs> yeah. Okay, because that's also the sound you make when you hit your balls. Yeah. <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> <laughs> Yo, I fucking love drag queens. I know, they're the best. I'm having one on here in the next two weeks. My girlfriend. Okay. The softest legs, hold on, pause it. The softest legs I ever touched was a drag queen. So, (laughs) cruising on 7th, historical drag bar. Absolutely it is. Also, they used to do a comedy show. Mm -hmm. One night, look, I, I may be the only person. If I have a good set at a comedy show, I get drunk. If I have a bad set at a comedy show, I also get drunk. I was going to say. But <laughs> very different feelings. I had a good set at cruising. I got drunk. 
And I want to sing karaoke. They were doing karaoke. I sung No Doubt, I'm Just a Girl. Aww. Because I love No Doubt. And then somebody came up to me and told me I was brave. And I was like, oh, no. Like, I'm not a girl inside. Yeah, I'm right. But <laughs> I just love that song. Aww. And I, I, I fucking love No Doubt. And then I was talking to her. Mm hmm. Is the drag queen still her? I always say her, yeah. Okay, so I was talking to her, and then she was like, it takes a lot to look this good. And I go, I bet your legs are smoother than any girl I've ever seen. And she goes, do you want to feel them? And I go, yes. I felt them. Softest legs. Did I've you feel ever. her balls, too? I did not, but I heard Manscaped only has two guards. Mm -mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, we're derailing. We're derailing. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. This is another pick of mine. Um, this one, oh, my God. Mm -mm. Those heels are too hot. Oh, my God. <laughs> That looked like some video game shit. You watch it again. She like bent. <laughs> no, the way her body folds. Watch her ankles. Watch her ankles. God One damn. shit just popped off. <laughs> Your shit shouldn't pop off like, like lead press on. <laughs> I know for real. Oh my god. I want to watch this over and over. I know, again. I do. The more you watch it, the funnier. I mean, I've been. Crying. It's also hypnotizing, and I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. What this person says. She says, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I should have just got people falling. I dying I'm told that's my favorite. All right, then what do we got? Here? The drinks are pink. The shots are clear. There you go. White claws pink. Yeah. Blur it though, because okay. they're not paying us. So this one made me laugh especially hard because this is so is she Something. wearing a neck brace already? No, no, no. It's like a turtleneck. It was, was like winter say, or whatever. I thought I was mean for talking about Higby. No, 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 no. This totally reminds me of some stupid shit I would do at my mom's house. And it just just watch it and pay attention to what's going on. I don't. I just thought it was Hold on. Hold, can I break it down before? It yes. starts playing. So that's the mom and the dad, yes. right? Yep, just they, chilling. They're no longer fucking because they're both reading Kindles. Exactly, watching crosswords. She's holding a banana like it's a gun. You think it's a banana. It's like a squishy, a squishy thing with beads in it, like a stress ball. Is what it is. She'll, you'll see. A, a squishy thing with beads. That's a sex toy, right? Like a like a butt plug. That's well, it could have been. No, but beads? It, it could be. It could be. All Brush right, go it, ahead. Like a plug bead. <laughs> oh shit! She's homie. Don't play that. <laughs> oh, she hit herself in the fucking head. <laughs> we fucking beads with everyone. You did put a special <laughs> needs girl in here. That's awesome. <laughs> Your mom. What the fuck? <laughs> Do you think she still lives at home? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Just chill, watch, watch. Yeah, you do, gotta raise up. She beat Pablo to herself. And the parents are like, fuck. <laughs> this is Corinthian leather. <laughs> oh my god. One more time. Let's uh, go back to that one. Let's play it one more time. <laughs> All right. The fuck something is. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't Start know it over. Okay. They're not even paying attention. No. She, this is a desperate cry for attention. <laughs> oh, I hit myself in the head. She was just happy to feel contact at some point. Oh my god, why would she? You know what fucked up? Now she's no longer getting inheritance because of that. For real. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. All right. Boom. How did she hit herself on the back of the fucking head? That's why you should never wear a bun. Oh my god. All right. We're big hair over here. Exactly. I am fucking turned up. I told you this is gonna happen. That's why we paused the TikTok, Rob. That's why we paused the TikTok. Okay. Oh, once, just once. Okay. Hey, Rob, you ready to get sexy? Yeah. Let's get sexy. Okay, so you today can go, put your back into it. This is the let's get uh, sexy time. Is the is the co question which female comics would you bang? Because nobody. No, oh my I'm god. I'm a professional. Oh okay. I only right. bang waitresses and bartenders at the comedy club. Oh my god, no, that wasn't the question. But uh, okay, now that we have the answer, no. <laughs> so let's talk about today. Uh, today's topic. Let's do weird and unusual turn-ons. Like if I guess it. And it, it's not weird to me. Yeah, that's what I mean. It doesn't have to be. It's not going to be weird or unusual to you, but it would be. It's out of the norm. I'll put it that way to standard people. Like some of mine are. Um, I love a man in a white fitted hat. Something about. Uh, Sir, it's odd. It's very peculiar. A uh, white fitted hat. Even the white rimmed sunglasses, like real douchey douche shit. I, I love it. I wore white rimmed sunglasses tonight that I got from like a birthday Elton party. John. 
that were like Armani Exchange, which I would never wear normally. So those are the shit, right? That's what I'm talking about. White fitted hat, white rim glasses. Yep. It's starting to seem kind of racist. I know. (laughs) What about black fitted hat? Oh, that could be nice too, I guess. It's just something about white because it's so crisp and clean and like. That's what I've been saying for years. Something about white. Oh my God. Yeah, Ryan. Okay. Are you Puerto Rican? I am. Where's your knife? In my tits. Duh. <laughs> Wherever Dude, Puerto Rican at. My little brother told me all Puerto Ricans have knives. And I, I was like, that's racist. Then the first time I was in upstate New York, he was having a house party. They kicked a Puerto Rican dude out, and him and, like, six of his friends pulled out knives. And I was like, oh, not racist, factual. Yep, see, exactly. That, that's all it is. Okay, so right. um, when men chew gum, I love when a man chew gu- chews gum. I think it has something to do with, like, I know their breath is going to be fresh, or at and least it tongue. fucking should be. And it draws my attention to their mouth and watching their mouth and their lips and then, I guess, imagining their lips on maybe my lips or whatever, whichever lips they choose and, you know, uh, stuff like Including that. Including the beehole hole lips? Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, whatever. No, it's all more good. of a vacuum. But mm-hmm. oh my, oh my god! So, what are some of your like? Uh... Dude, I didn't even think about like. I don't think I've thought about stuff that I like when a girl has a half sleeve and mm-hmm. uh, she doesn't know her father. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he has daddy issues. Okay. I like having my ass eaten. I okay. love it. And a lot of people don't see Dana's face. She looks like she just now, saw the do ring you, ghost. Do you, when you have your ass eaten, do you like to be like on your back with your legs up and over, you know? No, no, like, you know what's easier? Just, just laying on my stomach. So you lay, oh yeah, so you make her do all the, she, not only is she licking your shitter already, she has to do all the work by spreading your cheeks and holding them open First while off, licking your asshole. if a girl is licking your asshole, she wants to be the one doing all the work. Uh, I've never met a girl that's like, I'm dominant, let me lick your asshole. Well, you haven't met the right ones then. No, no, there's no right ones if she's not licking my <laughs> asshole. First off. <laughs> Second, no, no, so I've had, I've lifted the legs and had a girl eat my ass like that that's cool you just play with your balls like on her head and so then... I, I like to go hey if we're gonna hook up i'm gonna get in the shower mm-hmm. and then she blows me and as soon as she goes to the balls i just lift a leg and then that lets her know that's the like, hint feel free to keep going you okay know? but if i'm in a committed relationship then i roll over she fucking <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> and if she doesn't why am i in a committed relationship exactly her, bitch you know? get out but put out or get out it's a weird thing because you can't bring it up. You can't conversate. I can't be on a first date Why? and be like, eat my ass. Because it seems derogatory. It seems Lame. Uh, misogynistic. But if you're going down on me, you lick the balls. I lift a leg. Always the left. I'm left-handed, so it <laughs> comes left. easier. Then if she goes down, then it's like, oh, okay, game on. Okay, okay. Now, I also like a girl that wears horizontal stripes. Okay. I don't know why. Everybody really? says it like... See, that, and us women. No, no. Black and white horizontal stripes are the best. Oh, Dana Wizard's got black and white fucking horizontal stripes on blue, right now. But I'm not saying I'm not into it. Uh, <laughs> Dana Wisson for the win. It used to be a thing where my friends would point out, like, girls at a bar and be like, girl with horizontal stripes. I'm like, yeah, dude, I saw her seven minutes ago. You know, like, mm-hmm. everybody says your, your, your fetishes are built yeah. in childhood. I don't know if the hamburglar raped my mom <laughs> or, and I, I happened to get up to get cookies yeah, and was right, like, what's right. going on? You know, but a girl in black and white horizontal stripes, red and white horizontal mm-hmm. stripes, red and black horizontal stripes, horizontal mine's stripes the, in general, fucking, I get hard. Mine's the orange uh, prison jumpsuit. When it's Halloween time and you can buy those at the costume store, you better motherfucking go get one. Adam, that how is many my you own? absolute weakness. Yep, yep. Exa- yeah, that. Ooh. I only have pink boxers, but <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Sheriff Joe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Funding half my wardrobe. Look, horizontal stripes though. Mm-hmm. If if I kind of liked you, and you show up in horizontal stripes, I definitely like you. If I didn't think you were cute at all, and you show up in horizontal stripes. I will fuck you and not tell my friends about it. Like, oh my God. there's levels. Okay. If I was in love with you and you showed up in horizontal stripes, I'm marrying you. The chick I I've been married once. The girl I married showed up to our first date wearing horizontal stripes. Oh, okay. okay. And not only that, she painted graffiti. She <laughs> talked shit as well as I did. She was an MMA fighter. We were perfect for each oh, other. Oh hell you know? yeah. And then it didn't work out, but whatever. Well, yeah, well it's whatever. Yeah. I'm not to the point where I'm drunk enough to get sad about it. So yeah, good. Cool. That's good. That's but yeah, good. horizontal stripes, getting my ass eaten. If you want me to spit in your mouth, fucking points. Okay, good. Uh, what about like, uh, <laughs> what about slapping? 
like yeah, slap on yeah, the face. Yeah, dude. I, so I had a girl that wanted me to punch her in the mouth, and I couldn't do it. Well, I tried. you know, ah, that's crazy. But, but I did slap her. I had a girl that wanted me to carve my initials into her ass, and I did that because why not? She got she later got a tattoo on her ribs of me. Oh, okay. I'm still I'm into it. Uh, yeah, hey man, that's yeah. I'm, I'm into weird shit. I think it's because if it's like, oh, you're that dedicated to me. Yeah, right totally. It is. That is a turn off. My it mom is, abandoned yeah. me when I was younger. Like we're cool now, but there's a point. So now it's like, oh, if you're if you want to get matching tattoos, if you want to, me to carve my initials into you, my initials are R E M. That's not good initials. Yeah, right. But at the same time, if it doesn't work out, you'd be like, yeah, no, I love losing my religion. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's my shit. You know. Yeah. But I like that. Uh, I had a girl that wore one of those like spreader bars on her mouth. Still came in it. It was fine. Uh, in her mouth. Yeah, yeah. It Can't, holds your mouth open. Doesn't that like rip the corners of your mouth? That would probably. Ooh, I don't care. Uh, That's nice. Real nice, Rob. Hey, I don't care. Don't judge me. I'm not on trial here. <laughs> yes, you are. No, I don't. Right. Hey, oh, whatever oh. floats your boat. The next five questions be like, so what about this? I'm like, I plead the fifth. <laughs> like, no, I know it's a trial. Now, what about if a woman um, does it turn you on if? A woman wants to be like the dominant, like a dominatrix. Dude, like, I'll do it. Look, tie you up, spank you, beat look, I you. I think more than step like, on your balls with uh, stilettos. I don't know about that. Oh, I, don't know I think more than the dominant and submissive shit. I just like pleasing. Yeah. So, look, even when you're like a girl's submissive, if that's getting her off, that's cool for me. I got you. So if a girl's like, "Hey, I'm not into this whole thing, but I do want to like ride you while I call you a piece of shit," if it <laughs> makes her come. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> okay. I did, I, so I dated a girl one time that uh, we got into an argument, and she goes, hey, to atone for this argument, we should meet a girl, and you should fuck her while I'm tied to a chair, and I have to watch. And I was like, cool, let's do it. <laughs> hey, and yeah. we met a girl on Craigslist. This was back in the day. That was mm -hmm. really the only place to meet girls that were into this. She sent a bunch of pictures. My girlfriend at the time sent a bunch of pictures. I was like, fuck yeah. And then the chick goes, can I see his dick? And then immediately she texted me, my, my girlfriend, and was like, I don't want to do this. She got super jealous once mm. the girl asked for a dick. Yeah, But yeah. I'm still, that's on the bucket list. There you go. Big hair don't care fan base. If anybody wants to get tied to a chair while I fuck somebody that's not quite as cute as you, <laughs> I'll fucking do it. Oh I don't have shit doing on, I don't have anything to do on Thursday. <laughs> Josh laughed that virgin laugh, and I love that. <laughs> Did you, what? Josh, let's get fucking weird, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's not quite as cute as who? Huh, as the girl that's tied to the chair. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So if you're like, look, I have a weird cut queen thing. It's yeah, a cut yeah. queen. That's what it's called. Yeah, cut queen. If I have, a, I have a weird cut queen thing where I want to watch the guy I'm with fuck other girls, <laughs> and I like to be humiliated, I'll tie you to a chair, I'll fuck her, mm -hmm. and then I'll call you a dumb slut and all that stuff. But at the end, she's leaving. We're cuddling. We're exactly. watching community. Yep, exactly. It's all I love. fucking love community. <laughs> well, good or the good place. Yeah, yeah. Well, good talk. That's good. That's, you what know. a weird way to end it. That's good. No, we're not. Everything's well, going great. This she goes, well, good talk. All right, moving <laughs> on. What's your favorite Bible verse? Well, only because we're like eight hour. This is an eight hour show by now, with, which at, I love. We're which at I 63 love. minutes. I could do, I mean, I could. My timing's a little off. I've been drinking. I could spend all day here with you, Rob. I do. I love it. Um, but we do have to get moving along. You could have been anyways. anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I, exactly. And I'm very happy. Shout out to Jay-Z, ho. What did you even just say just now? I heard, hey, Jay -Z. You're That's Puerto what you just did. Wait, wait. You're Puerto Rican? Jay yes. And you don't know about Hove? Hovacito? I didn't know. What you, I could, didn't even understand you. I thought it was just drunken slur. Hola, Hovacito. Mm -mm. I'll teach you. Don't worry. I'm a fucking American, Rob. I I'll feed like... you, baby bird. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So now we're gonna move to the last segment, the uh, um, the big hair segment. As you know, I'm killing it already. Uh, gotta get Rob's red wig. Are we gonna oh, yeah. snap it up? Yep. Now it's time for the big hair don't care segment. <laughs> okay. Well, hey there, Rob. Hey. Welcome to the segment of the show called the Big Hair Don't Care segment. What am I, 14 again? <laughs> when I was 14, I had long hair. Oh, did you? It was black, but I was chubby, too. I looked like a little Asian girl. Oh, well, okay. My cheeks were all hu super huge, but I had black hair. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> picture it. I was wearing Marilyn Manson t-shirts that they wouldn't let me wear for school picture day, so they gave me a universal shirt. What's wrong with them? <laughs> Anyways, I like having hair again. Thank well, you good. for making all my dreams. I don't even have to go to Turkey to get this done. This is cool. Well, see, because here on the Big Hair Don't Care podcast, big hair is liberating. It's liberating. And it's this a state how, of mind. Exactly. It's how I live my life on a daily basis. So what I thought we were going to do today is we're going to talk about what is your stance on woke comedy? <laughs> and I'll go first if you want, or you can go first. Yeah, no, you definitely go first. Okay. Well, here's where I probably get canceled. Um, okay. That's good. Cancel so, only boosts your career. You're right. Shane's doing theaters. Louie's doing Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Chris Rock's performing in Baltimore for half the people. All right. So, well, so here it is then. So my stance on woke comedy, grow the fuck up. Grow the fuck up. I can't handle it. Comedy is supposed to be comedy. Um, if you're offended by shit, then don't go out to comedy shows. Um, you have no business being a part of it or being around it or whatever. Just grow the fuck up. Comedians are there to make you laugh. Not every comedian's going to um, uh, make every uh, person in the crowd laugh. There's different tastes Comedy's for different subjective. people. It's subjective, and that's fine. You don't have to like what uh, whatever this, this comedian said or that comedian said, but to be offended by it and to go on these tirades and to, oh, you know, um, uh, never mind, I can't say that. Um, anyway, I, mean, you could. I was going to say, you I mean, you can't rally against all like, woke culture and then be like, I can't say that. Well, I mean, like, pick a side, you know, uh, well, then word, were you going to say that? Okay, well, I get you. It's not my, it's not my cup of tea. Don't be such stupid cunts that you're just offended by everything. Like, I can't handle it. Comedy is comedy. We're here to laugh. The, the world needs more laughter and love and silliness and just get the fuck over it and laugh. And don't be so offended by shit. Everyone Agreed. is so offended. And I can't, hand, I can't handle the whole offendedness all the time. I, I've had people come up to me and go like, hey, you can't tell the jokes you tell because it talks about Mexicans and blacks. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, it talks about my family. I can, it's my life. I can tell whatever the fuck exactly. I want. Exactly. So I think there's a, a spot where you're like, you can't censor people and you can't. Unless it's not funny. Yeah. There's a certain point where it stops. It's hate speech. Yeah, yeah that's totally. Where if I was like, if I was like, you know what's funny? The blacks. That's not yeah, a joke. Yeah, no, no. Exactly. But if you can do something in a clever way where you point out the difference between two people, fucking go for it. Absolutely. At the same time, uh, I think comics rallying against woke culture is getting old as shit. I'm so tired of hearing comics go up and talk about like, I am edgy. I'm yeah. doing the things you're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's not the things you're not supposed to do if everybody's doing it to make a name for themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I could do it from a clever point of view, you can, you can, you. Some people do it fucking phenomenal. I have a, a lineup of comics in my head that I love that skirt that line so well. Mark Jesse talks about being gay in a way that makes me think he's homophobic sometimes. <laughs> like, but he does it in a very fucking funny way, and he's gay. Mm -hmm. But then again. Every new comic that's been doing it for fucking seven months, eight months, wants to go out and have that edgy bit because that gets attention. Yeah. None of it. None of it gets attention. It's all fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. You want to see an edgy comic? Watch David Case. David Case yeah. is a fucking pro at what he does. You want to see an edgy comic? Obviously, there's the big name guys, Louis, fucking mm -hmm. all them, but fuck them. We're talking about people that you haven't heard of yet that's coming up. Yep. Augustina Zoida. Walks the line where you're like, I don't know if he's right wing or left wing, and I don't care because it's funny. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing you can do as a comic is go, look at all these people that wouldn't normally agree with me and look at them laugh at the things they don't agree with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So fuck woke culture, but also like uh, everybody needs equality. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Am I pandering? Is that what pandering is? It feels like pandering a little bit. <laughs> But that's how I feel. Like I feel like a joke and a, and a statement about how you feel are two different fucking things. Absolutely. No, very well said, Rob. Absolutely. I 100% agree. Like I think everybody should be treated the same, but at the same time, I want to make fun of the fact that uh, my brother would be a hot trans girl. Yeah. There, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, with that being said, we give that the big hair don't care stamp of approval. Yeah. Rob, maybe I want to thank you so much for being here today. I I'm had a hot mess. You are just a hot, hot, redheaded, sexy mess over there, you. Dude, when I come back, I'm coming back as a redhead, just so you guys know. You know what's going to be fucked up in like three years when they make the like the sad Rob's Dead post? 
that that's gonna be the last clip is me being like, when I come back, I'm coming back as a redhead. Love you, Rob. Thanks for being here. Oh, you do. Sorry, I made it weird. <laughs> We're out. <laughs> <laughs> I. Ah, yes. I'm Coulter. Oh my. Sometimes you just feel so goddamn good, you gotta express it. Glowed up, ready for my close up. Go ahead and just plaster my face right on top of that poster. Got big hair, don't care. I'm standing up in this spotlight. This is my life and I love it. And there's no part that I won't share. Ah, I'm feeling myself. Well, independently, depend on myself. You get the better me, a bitch ahead of me. I'm chopping it off, have a sit on the shelf. Ooh, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. You want smoke, then I'm Bob Marley. If you gon' blow, then I'm bombarding. I'm civilian and shit like I'm Tom Hardy. Ooh, had a great week, celebrate team, had a breakthrough here. Have a cake piece, if it ain't me, then you're wasting your time. So basically, I'm just taking. What's mine? All of it. This is my shot. I'm calling it. I mean, what's so funny? Let's get this money. Bitch, I'm coming. I'm sitting on top and I'm following it. Shh.